Hey, it's Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, July 24th. So we have the moon in Pisces all day. We are wrapping up an emotional cycle, wrapping up an emotional chapter. The Pisces energy as it is, we are doing deep seated healing. We are very introverted. We're being pulled into our inner realms. We have some thoughts. We have some ideas. We have some emotions that we have to explore. We have an awareness of new goals, new visions, new dreams that we would like to be working towards. But of course, we have to clean up the debris of the past. This is very much like one step forward, two steps back type of energy. But it is helping to refine our emotions. It's helping to provide an ending and a closure to certain chapters for us to get on with this brand new show. Now, we have eight different aspects taking place here today. All eight involve the moon, which means that this is a moon day. Wednesdays, typically speaking, are ruled over by Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who is in his pre-retrograde shadow period, who will be nearing the final degrees of Leo energy here today, as this is the last day that Mercury will be in Leo energy. He's going to move into his rulership in Virgo energy here on the 25th. So we have an intensity taking place in our headspace because Mercury is in his rulership, because he's in the final degrees of Leo energy. We are trying to get heart and head aligned, unpacking different, let's call it thoughts, perspectives, ideas and understandings of the past, especially where this emotional chapter is coming to an end. We are also building this bigger dream, this bigger vision that our heart is now asking us to do and pursue. But with the moon in Pisces rapidly processing the heaviness, the weight of the old chapters ending in order to free up the space for us to actually be inspired and excited to pivot and pursue something new. There is this underlying tug of war going on in our head space and our heart space from the past to the present to the future and then back again. So it is going to be a very interesting day seeing as moon days do lend us the ability to kind of clear out some of the heavier emotions and really anchor in the good ones and prepare us for a new chapter. And of course, when the moon moves into Aries energy, emotionally speaking, we are moving into a new, new emotional chapter, but we're already in Leo season. We're adjusting to Leo season. There is a totally different mood and attitude that we are now in that is putting us in a more brave, more courageous position to bust out of the old and actually initiate the new. So the moon in Pisces giving us a whole day of moon aspects. This is just going to help us again, release and purge the heavier emotions of the chapters that we're ending, the purging point that we're currently in, getting rid of those fragments of the old realm, the old reality, the old version of self, clearing the space for something new to be built. So we kick the day off with a little bit of a tough interaction, if I do say so myself. The moon in Pisces going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. Basically the wisdom that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons that we've already gone through. Jupiter is in Gemini energy. Gemini energy is an air sign. Pisces energy is a water sign. And typically speaking, there is a beautiful thing that happens with water and air interacting. It pops off with an electrical impulse that gives us a download of creative solutions. The problem is, is that Jupiter being in Gemini energy, we're still kind of divided. We're split. We're torn on what we want to do, what we want to pursue. We're torn on the options, on the opportunities that we have available to us. One day we're leaning into one. The next day we're leaning into the other. The next day we want neither. The next day we want both. And then we rapidly process the pros and cons again in order to find a more comfortable middle point. A square 
highlights tension. It highlights conflict. It highlights where we're going through a growing pain. And so the moon being in Pisces energy, typically speaking, there is a huge part of us pulling us back to review the past, especially where, you know, sudden disruption of emotions have occurred, especially where closing chapters are concerned. But then there's equally a part in the Pisces energy that has us excited and inspired for what could be. That's where the dreaminess, that's where the imaginative energy energy comes into play. So there's this divisiveness in the Gemini energy that has us torn. There's this divisiveness in the Pisces energy that also has us torn. Normally, Jupiter would give us a little bit of optimism about the future, a little bit of confidence about some of the choices that we currently have available for us to choose from. But this is the square. So we're not feeling optimistic. We're not feeling confident. We are so back and forth. We are so torn that it is overstimulating. It is putting us in a situation where we just want to crawl into a ball and kind of sit this one out until life wants to wake us up and actually choose the path for us because the pros and cons are becoming so overwhelming that we're finding ourselves in a state of paralysis. Lucky for us, we're not sitting in this energy for too long. The moon in Pisces then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So we love this because when Uranus is being aspected in a positive way such as this, he brings clarity. He brings an aha moment. He brings an epiphany. He brings an awareness on where it is, especially in Taurus energy. Our physical realm is screaming to us, things cannot stay the same. We need to change either our routines, our environment, the way that we're going about life. Maybe we have to change our relationship dynamics. Maybe we have to change our careers or our financial situation. All very rooted in those Tauran aspects. We love Pisces energy and Taurus energy interacting though, because whatever it is that we can dream about or envision in the Pisces energy, we can actually bring into form, bring into our reality through the Taurus energy. So this is almost like a shift in our mood, in our attitude, in our perspective. Obviously, that tension that we just sat in with Jupiter is illuminating. That one particular option seems to be more favorable at this particular juncture than the other. We're going to run with that and it is going to be amplified due to this uranian energy on where it is that we have to pivot where we have to make a major change in order to get a different result the moon is then going to semi-square pluto so pluto is the great transformer he is retrograde in this Aquarius energy, highlighting the power struggle that is still alive and well within us. So that could be between the ego self and the higher self. It could be between the old version of self, the new version of self. It could be between old circumstances for and present circumstances. There's a lot of different ways that we could be at war with ourselves. Because this is a semi-square, there is a little bit of tension and conflict, not as major as a full-blown square. However, enough there to kind of highlight where it is that we're uncomfortable, where it is that we do have to make a sudden change. And the intensity that Pluto brings is for us to examine our psyche, our conditioning, our programming, that part of us that is in survival mode, that engages the physical body to have fears, doubts, and insecurities about the changes, the dreams, the visions that we're currently trying to kind of, you know, visualize in our mental plane, because our ego self doesn't want us to grow, doesn't want us to evolve, trying to convince us to just continue doing what it is that we have been doing, and we will learn to settle in it. Of course, that's not what we're doing. We're in the year of eight. Eight means that there is a major change, a major transformation where power is concerned. We are bossing up to our most authentic selves. With that comes the ability to actually be the creator of our own realities. But that means we have to be operating from our higher self instead of the ego self. The moon interacting with Pluto is likely going to bring up fears, doubts, and insecurities, likely going to bring up where we feel overwhelmed, likely going to bring up where a part of us just wants everything to stay the same because the to-do list of what we would have to change is a little bit frightening, a little bit daunting. So what happens in the Pisces energy is that when we get overwhelmed or when we get confused, we want to check out. 
We don't want to deal with reality at all. We want to live in la la land, dreaming about the, you know, shoulda, coulda, wouldas, dreaming about the what could be's without the actual attachment to, yes, this is what I want. Therefore, this is what I have to do. So again, just highlighting where we're going back and forth within ourselves, providing ourselves the opportunity to, to have closure, to bring things to a certain ending point, but also hesitating in doing that because that would mean that we have to actually accept our lives in the way that they actually are and come to terms with a certain loss, a certain ending, a certain closure. The moon then goes ahead, makes a very tough interaction with Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in the heart and soul of the Zodiac here in this Leo energy. So she is heart aligned. She's having a major change of heart. She's tapping into a boldness, a bravery, a courage that she hasn't had before to do what she needs to do to make herself feel safe and secure, to make herself feel happy and experience pleasure and joy once again. But of course, this is a tough interaction. So instead of feeling bold and brave and courageous we're feeling weak we're feeling raw we're feeling vulnerable we're feeling like we don't have what it takes to do the things that we want to do we're feeling overwhelmed with bringing certain let's call it emotional chapters to an ending to a closure point it's all very overwhelming and of course with the moon and pisces the pisces energy being the escape artist of the zodiac our natural demeanor is wanting to run wanting to hide we won't sit in that energy for very long because the moon is going to make an interaction with the sun. Now, albeit it's not the greatest interaction, but it's not the worst either. It's kind of an awkward one to put us in a different perspective, a different mood, different attitude. Anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together for an interaction, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be a new awareness of our wants, our needs, our desires. Of course, the sun now in his rulership in this Leo energy, shining a bright light on our true authentic selves, new wants, new needs, new desires, big ideas for us to pursue, new dreams for us to start building towards. But the moon in Pisces, again, is split on that. Instead of being super excited and inspired for what could be, we're focused on what was supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be. Many chapters are ending. Many things need to be released. Many things need to be brought to an ending, to a closure, to a finality that emotionally speaking, we still have a very strong connection to. And so there is this aha moment, this awareness on where it is that part of us is excited to get the party started, moving towards something new, something big, something exciting, but we can't truly be excited about it because part of us very focused on what we have to let go of, what we have to release, what we have to purge in order to create the space, the mood, the attitude to pivot and start building towards future goals, dreams, and visions. Around 4.32 p.m., and again, Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Saturn. So a conjunction means that there's an ending and a beginning taking place. And of course, Saturn's no joke. Saturn's the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. Of course, he's retrograde. So this is an internalized analyzation on where it is that we need to boss up, where we need to have more willpower and determination to be building ourselves up, to understand the hard things that we have to do to remove certain aspects out of our lives because they're limiting us in being able to make the kind of progress that we need to make. Saturn is retrograde in this Pisces energy, trying to bring some karmic chapter to a close. Now, Mr. Saturn, he brings a very serious, somber tone. He could bring Nancy, negative Nancy, Debbie Downer, Betty the bully. He could bring the mean girls out to play. He definitely could. And because the moon in Pisces energy is so super sensitive, we could really spiral with that negative narrative, with those overwhelming thoughts, with those overwhelming feelings. If you do find yourself with the mean girls, Please understand that the breakdown of emotion, the breakdown of self is needed in order for us to build ourselves up in a much better way. That would be the ending part of this particular conjunction. 
the beginning part of this conjunction is that it's bringing us back down to earth. We tend to get ahead of ourselves. We tend to get overwhelmed. The vision, the goal, the dream tends to be too big when the moon is in Pisces. We get overwhelmed with all the things that would have to be done in order to actually get to that particular juncture. Saturn brings us back down to earth. He also puts us in check a little bit. He gives us a reality check on where it is that we have to kind of boss up get a little bit more responsible, a little bit more accountable for our energy, for our actions, for what it is that we're actually doing in our physical realm. Now, this could trigger a new level of ambition for us to actually see our new dreams, goals, and visions through. This could put us in a situation that could uh, kind of help us out to not lose ourselves in this emotional spiral. Again, providing a little bit more of a calm, cool, collected approach to some of the overwhelming situations that we're dealing with. Basically, the moon in Pisces could totally sweep us away into La La Land and totally swallow us whole with our feelings. The Saturn energy is at least going to anchor us, prevent us from being swept away, so to speak. This is a time where we could definitely kind of get our shit together and actually focus on what needs to be done. This is a great time to get organized. It's a great time to plan and strategize what needs to be cleaned up in order for us to actually start being in a position to build towards something new. So it kind of brings a little bit more of a practical approach to our physical realm, where the Pisces energy takes a little bit more of a dreamy approach. We kind of don't wanna focus on the harsh truth, the harsh reality of our mental health, of our emotional disposition, of our current circumstances that are a little bit messy that we would rather not deal with. The Saturn energy bosses us up to a level where we're able to tackle these not so nice parts of life with a better disposition, a better demeanor. So that is a beautiful energy, regardless of even if it does manifest at the beginning with bringing the mean girls out to play, getting a little bit hard on yourself, beating yourself up, breaking yourself down, that Saturn energy will swoop in and boss you up to the level of accountability and responsibility that you need to be at to actually handle life. So I see that as a very good energy. The moon is going to go ahead and make a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in Gemini energy. So again, very divided on where our energy and efforts are needed the most. We can be a little bit scatterbrained. We can be a little bit, I'm going to say scattered with our attention as well. Because this is a positive interaction, I truly feel that this is going to help us get motivated, get excited, get inspired for what could be. You know, Mars in this Gemini energy, the Gemini energy has has us focus on two very different paths, two very different directions, two very different options. But we're not being overwhelmed by it at this point. We're giving ourselves permission to move into La La Land, imagination land, to actually explore what both of these options would look like, what they would feel like, what they would require of us. And because Mars is being aspected in a positive way, we're bringing the hype, we're bringing the excitement, we're bringing the passion, we're bringing the intensity for one particular goal, vision, and dream over the other. This is definitely helping to build and cultivate that inner spark, that inner fire, that inner flame that is needed in order for us to make the great big changes that we're now considering in making. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Pisces energy making a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Leo energy. So earlier on in the day, we didn't have a good vibe with Venus, right? We didn't see the boldness and the bravery and the courage needed in our heart space in order to pivot and actually do the hard things, which happen to be the right things in order to build a realm and reality that looks good and that feels good. We were kind of sitting in the confusion. We were wide open with our wounds earlier on in the day, and it was a little bit overwhelming, and it did put us in a little bit of a funk. But here at the end of the day, we've had some positive interactions. That reset with Saturn was the building block, and then we had that interaction with Mars, helping to kind of cultivate the excitement, the passion, the fire. Now, the positive interaction with Venus is putting us in the right mood and the right attitude to get heart aligned. 
We are thinking about our what our heart is asking us to do, asking us to pursue. We're thinking about who and what makes us happy, what who, who and what makes us feel safe and secure, who and what we want more of, and in turn realizing who and what we do not want in our lives any longer. Although we're not so focused on the negatives, we're more focused on the positives at this point, this is going to help put us in a mood, an attitude, an ability to think about our options and opportunities right now from the most bold, brave, courageous stance that we could ever even take. We are listening to our heart space. We do feel good about what it is that we are excited to do, excited to pursue the aha moments that we're having with the new wants, needs, and desires are being recognized and realized. And we are feeling really, I'm going to say, just optimistic about what could be if we're brave enough to do what we need to do to close the door on the past, bring it to a completion point, bring it to a finality for good, and actually clear the space in our physical realms to build towards this new goal, this new dream, this new vision.